What's up guys, War here, and today I'm gonna to give you a complete leveling guide for any of the classes going into season 27 of Diablo 3. Let's do it. All right, so starting off, we're a couple weeks away from the brand new season, guys. So we're just doing this in preparation to get you all geared up, ready for the new season. So right before the new season comes out, there's gonna be a challenge rift that happens uh, right before the season comes out. I've talked about this in the other like best start videos that I've made for each class. Do not do this rift before the season comes out. The week that the new season comes out, wait, do wait for the new season to start, then come do the challenge rift. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, well, what's the challenge rift? If you don't know, a challenge rift is where the game is gonna give you a preset build. You don't get to choose it. And you're gonna go in and try to complete a rift under a certain time. And when you do, you're gonna get a challenge rift cash, okay? So now, before, if you didn't have adventure mode already unlocked, you used to have to complete the campaign and then adventure mode would unlock for you. So a lot of people would have somebody jump them to the end, complete the campaign to get adventure mode. Now, Blizzard has changed it to where everybody has access to adventure mode. So what you're gonna do is take adventure mode, we're gonna put it on hard. You're going to pick whatever class you want. Now, in the new season, I'm gonna be playing the DH, so we're gonna start with the DH. And you just start the game, okay? Make sure you're on adventure mode, and we're going to hop right in. All right, guys. The first thing you want to do is go over to your mailbox, and you want to get your Herodric uh, cash rewards from completing the challenge rift. And we're going to put those up on screen now, guys. These are going to be all the rewards that you're going to get from completing the stash or the, the challenge rift. And we're going to use all these to get a big jump start onto the new season. Okay. Once you've got those, the first thing that you're going to want to do is come over here to your followers and you're gonna wanna look at their weapons and for whatever reason, their weapons happen to be a whole lot better than ours, plus 110% damage. So we're gonna take the scoundrel's weapon. You can do this for any of classes, come over here and take their stuff. We're not gonna be really using a follower right off the bat. Next, you wanna come in and you wanna buy all the items that you can buy from the vendor. It'll give you a nice little survivability boost because you're gonna have that 5 million gold from the challenge rift cash, okay? Next, what you're going to want to do, guys, is come over here to the blacksmith, train him up to level 12. <clears throat> and then you're going to want to come all the way over here to the artisan and also level her up to 12. Okay. Now, once we have both of those leveled to 12, the next thing that we need is we need to get our, Hera our Kanias cube. The way that you're going to do this, guys, is you're going to want to go to Act 3, go to the Ruins of Cesaron. And it's going to be on level 2 of the Ruins. Okay, you're gonna go through the ruins here. You're gonna get to level two, and then you're gonna unlock the Kanias cube, and then we're gonna go back to town. Pretty easy, it's the first place that you're gonna wanna go. Okay, now that we're back in town, guys, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is get our legendary power, and then gamble our blood shards with Kadala. Now, each class, I've done all the videos, guys, for each class on what to get when leveling up your rare item and what to gamble for. So I'm not going to go break it down in every class. We have all videos for that. If you want to check those out, I'll link those in cards or down below in the description. But with the Demon Hunter, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we want to craft daggers. Okay. Now with the resources that you get, you're only going to be able to craft a couple of these. So I'm just going to craft two. Okay. You're going to craft two. And then you're only going to have enough resources to upgrade one of these and then extract the power. Okay, so what we're looking for is we want Carly's Point. I personally like Carly's Point over the uh, the Fan of Knives upgrade, but we're going to see. So we're going to go in, upgrade it, boom. We got Carly's Point. So this is going to be our level 70 weapon power, okay? So the way we do this is we go back to Recipe 1, and we're going to extract the power. Now, this is all that we're going to have, okay? So I've already extracted it, but we have it in there, all right? So then we come in here. We're going to go to Carly's point, and now we have the damage of Impale is increased by 375%, and it returns hatred. Huge. Great power. The next thing that you're going to want to do is go gamble at Kadala for your best item. For the Demon Hunter, I'm going to go with Bracers because I'm looking for the Wraps of Clarity. So we got it. Boom. Right off rip. Wraps of Clarity. After getting the Wraps of Clarity, we only spent 50 of our Blood Shards. So we had 475, so we still got 425 left. Now here's where we have a couple options. Because we got them so quick, we could roll for Helmets to give us Leoric's Crown, which will give us some more EXP. So boom, 
We got that. Excellent. We can also use that level 16, which would be fantastic as soon as we get some gems, which will be great. And that's pretty much it for the Demon Hunter in the beginning. Now, if I wanted, I could go roll Poxfold for pants, or I could try to get a ring for Leoric's uh, ring just for some more EXP. But I think I'm going to save my blood shards because once we level up, we're going to be able to um, gamble for some quivers around level 31. After gambling for our items, the next thing that we're going to do, guys, is we need to craft a level 70 weapon. And we want to get level reduced requirement on it. Now, the way that we want to do this is we need two things to happen when we get when we roll for these and make them. OK, uh, we don't need this anymore. So when we craft our weapon, we're looking for two things. We're looking for life on hit as a primary. And then we're looking for any kind of crowd control ability as a secondary, where, whether it's stun, freeze, doesn't matter. OK, so the reason that we want that is because it's going to make it easier for us to roll for the level reduced requirement on the weapon. Now, again, guys, when all those resources that we got for the uh, challenge rift cash, we're only going to be able to make a couple of these. So I would suggest just making probably, I don't know, maybe two to four of them, and you're just going to pick your best one. So go with any two-handed weapon. I guess I'll go with a two-handed sword, or I guess you could go with a bow for the uh, demon hunter. So I'm going to make I'm going to make four of them. Okay, we're going to make four, and what we're looking for is a crowd control feature on the secondary, and then life on hit as a primary. So this one's not very good. Okay, we have we have crowd control, but we don't have life on hit. So right now, this is our best candidate. Right here, we have life on hit, but we don't have a crowd control on the secondary. And then this one, we have life per hit and also don't have a crowd control on the secondary. So this one's out of the question. So we're not going to use this one, but we can use one of these three. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to uh, our artisan and we're going to try to roll. So you can kind of look at it here. Now, what we're looking for is level reduced requirement. And how you check that is ticking the question mark box, right? So we want to keep life on hit. Uh, we could roll the max discipline. But do you see all the possible options here? This is the reason why we wanted a crowd control feature, because if we did, all of these options would be gone. And the only thing we would have to pick from is discipline, durability loss and level reduce requirement. Because, again, you're not going to have that many materials to do a lot of rolling. So I don't like that one. Let's look at uh, let's look at this one real quick. So we have the crowd control effect, right? So here's a better option. This is the one that we want to go with. We want to replace our max discipline. And do you see how there's only one, two, three, four, five options? That's going to be our best bet. Let's look at this one real quick. I just want to check. This is still way too many options. So what we, our best one is to do the one with the crowd control effect already on it. So these next two, we're not going to do. You're only going to have a set amount of rolls, guys. So you want to roll for the best possible option like the highest level reduced requirement you can get. So we're going to get rid of this. The highest that you can get is minus 30. So you can use it as early as 40. So let's go ahead and roll. Yep. Okay. One, two, three. Now, again, we're only going to get a certain amount of rolls. So hopefully we can get it. Roll, keep going. Discipline. This is a bad example. There we go. So lever reduce requirement by eight. We really want that a lot higher though, right? We want to try to get that as close to 30 as possible. There we go. Level requirement reduced by 27. The max is 30, but we got it at 27, which is still really good. So this is going to be our level 70 weapon when we hit 43. And once we get to 43, this is going to be the weapon that should carry us all the way to 70. No problem. All right. Now that we got our level 70 weapon and we're all set, ready to get to level 43 so we can use it. The next thing I want to give you guys is that as you're leveling up, there's two things that you can do. You can come back to the blacksmith periodically as you're leveling and craft higher level weapons. All right. As you level up. So that way you do more damage or you can go see the vendors. You can use any of the vendors that you want in any of the acts. And as you level up, 
we have this really nice sword, which is really nice at level one. So we don't need that one. Um, but as you level up, that way you have weapons that you can equip or armor, etc. Okay, and, and at this point, you only want to take what's green. You don't care. As long as it's green, it's fine. You're going to be getting newer stuff as you level up. So those are the two um, things. Hit the vendors and then craft more weapons as you level up. Don't craft armor. You're going to find plenty of it. You just need the weapons for more damage. So definitely craft weapons and then go see the vendors. Doesn't matter what act you're in. You can do act two, act three. Act three has two really good vendors right next to each other, but it's totally up to you. Okay. Now that you have that tip, the next thing is what types of leveling can you do to level up really fast? Okay. So there's one, it's called the blade leveling where you can use blades. I think it's in act three that we're going to be looking for. It's just blades of that come chopping down and deal damage to the enemies that will just level you up so let's go find them right now all right guys so i found them they're actually in act one halls of agony and you're gonna find them you're gonna just search for these until you find these blades and you're just gonna run around and let the blades kind of do all the damage here and we're gonna gain some levels just some really nice xp don't go to, to halls of agony three they're in halls of agony one I had to find them and I gained a couple levels just by doing that. But this is a really cool way to level up. It does take a really long time to do it because you have to draw all the enemies to be able to get hit by the blades and then, you know, walk them through and you're really not doing a whole lot of damage. I would advise that nobody do this on hardcore just because you take damage from the blades yourself or, you know, if you have it on a higher difficulty, it is going to be a little bit harder to gain all this RP from killing these guys or excuse me, EXP. So, after that, we have a couple more things that we can do as far as leveling. The next one that we can do, guys, is the curse chest method, where you just go do a curse chest that typically will spawn 100 enemies, and you're just going to fight them all, okay? So, to do this, you want to go to Act 3, or excuse me, Act 2, Temple of the Firstborn, Level 1. Normally, it's the, the first big room that you come across... But that's okay. We'll just keep looking for it. If not, we'll just have to reset the game until I find it for you guys. Oh, here it is. We found it. So this is the cursed chest. You're going to want to start this and just kill 100 enemies. And really easy. You're just going to try to kill all the 100 enemies. No big deal. And you can keep doing this cursed chest until the time is up. And then you just keep leveling that way. It's really, really easy. You just reset your game and then just keep spawning it. Super easy to do. We're going to try to get out of here. Okay, guys, the next way to level up your character really fast is just doing riffs. You can just keep doing riffs over and over and over again. Now, some say this is probably the best method because just as you continue to do riffs, you're going to get better and better gear. So it's not only one way to level you up, but you're going to get really good gear in the process as you continue on your way to 70. So on to the final and best way, in my opinion, is... Is massacre bonusing okay massacre bonus is definitely one of the best ways to actually do uh, all of your leveling it's the fastest and the reason I say that is because you're going to get a huge huge multiplier for doing massacre bonusing and chaining that together so there's a couple spots and I think I've gone over this in another video to help do massacre bonusing so the ruins of Seshron really good okay in Act 1, in any of the Halls of Agony, also very good at the lower levels. But probably the best one is where I just showed you guys where the chest is. Because you can combine the chest with Massacre Bonusing. So, we're going to go back to the Temple of the Firstborn. Okay? There's still a lot of monsters here. If you don't know what Massacre Bonusing it is, all we're doing is we're going to chain... We're going to chain killing these guys. We're killing a bunch. See? Now, do you see the little ticker at the end there? So that massacre bonus, that ticks. The higher that we get it, okay, the more EXP that we're going to get as we're continuing the EXP bonus on this. So the more monsters that we kill, the higher this bonus is going to be. But I'm going to show you. Like, we're going to get it to 50, and I'm going to let it go just so you can see how big the bonus is. So it can be it can be really intimidating, I guess, in a way to, you know, we got 48. So we got a times two bonus on top of that and that's how you level up really really fast you get that thing up to a couple hundred 
you're gonna be gaining so many levels, it's gonna be insane. It is by far the fastest way to level in Diablo. So guys, that's gonna do it for today's video on how to completely level from one to 70 in Diablo 3 for season 27. You're gonna be able to do this with any class. It doesn't matter which one at all. You're just gonna apply the same method to whatever class you are. And as before, guys, I have all the videos down in the description or on my channel for what to upgrade and what to gamble for depending on your class. So make sure to check those out if you have any questions or just let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything that you guys have questions about. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like. And if you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. All the support has been absolutely amazing. We got a lot more content coming your way. So thank you guys again so much. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.